happens there. So as I'm awake at this time, I hear pressure changes on the floor, like somebody's walking. Thank you for tuning into the Malware Report. Before the fastest hour in paranormal talk radio begins, go over to italkparanormal.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter. The opinions expressed in the Mallard Report are those of the host and participants and are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any simulcasting radio network or sponsor. All listeners are advised to make their own decisions. It's the Mallard Report. Yeah, the Mallard Report. It's the Paranormal Talk Radio Show with Jim Mallard as your host. See what lies beneath any paranormal activity. Go inside a world that others don't want to see. It's the Mallard Report. Yeah, the Mallard Report. We join an interview with Ruben Her. Hernandez already in progress due to audio problems. Walking down the hallway, and it stops at the bottom of the bed. Now, this time I, I, I'm admitting here that, yeah, I was scared, and um, I was clutching the blanket, but all of a sudden I hear a, a male raspy voice uh, call me by my first name, says Ruben, and really raspy, and I kind of clenched and looked over my shoulder down toward my feet because that's where, where the runway is, uh, what I like to call it. Anyhow, um, when that happened... Um, yeah, I was pretty pretty awake at that point, and um, after that, I hear the pressure changes, like walking away toward the other side of the room, away from me. But what happened then at that point uh, kind of opened my eyes. I heard a chuckle, a male voice chuckle as it moved away. So that that kind of scared me and pissed me off all in the same. Now at this point, I, I want to know more what's going on. So I, I would hear voices in the middle of the night, in the morning. Mechanical type noises, uh, mechanical tones, kind of synthesized sounds, and then um, I thought I was kind of you know hearing things, losing it a little bit. So that's when I went out and bought my first uh, recorder, an Olympus 300, I think it is, and um, I set it overnight. And also I downloaded an app on my cell phone. So every time I heard something in the morning, I would turn it on, let it record, and fall back asleep. My very first recording uh, ever ever done was of a, a male entity. The recording, um, you hear me jostling around reaching for my phone because the phone was actually the, um, the uh, device that was uh, recording. The alarm went off so I can get up and go to work. So you hear me reach over uh, to that recorder, well, I mean the uh, phone, and you hear me jostle around. I grab it, and then you hear, good morning. Clear as day, but it's a male voice, and I'm the only male in the house. So after I did that, uh, before I listened to it, I, I actually put it in the um, connect it to my car and drive to work and listen to it on the way to work. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, that wasn't me. And wasn't the milkman, so to speak. So who was it? What was it? And why did they tell me good morning? So after that, that's uh, what pretty much solidified that I was not going crazy. And that just uh, broke my curiosity, just find out more what it is. What, what more life is there? Is there an afterlife, another world, something else going on here that I wasn't aware of. You know, yeah, rest assured there is. Today I'm aware of 12 entities, three by first name, and we interact, talk back and forth, kind of like we're talking now, just done a little differently. But the results are the same. Today we kind of have a, uh, for lack of a better, better term, a relationship. I still give them access, limited access, to the physical world, and that's through me. They're able to request songs, TV shows, movies, things of that sort. Last Christmas, um, me and my family, we dressed up the tree. It was a blue and grayish color scheme. So after it was done, I was doing a recording, kind of asking the entities around here what they thought of it. They said it was okay. Their exact words, okay. And um, at this point, I can't hear them because I'm actually doing the recording. But when I went back and listened to it, I heard them say, okay. So I said, well, what would you want done to it? And they answered they wanted some red ornaments, bright red ornaments. So I went to a a Rite Aid out here and bought a dozen of red red ornaments, and I put them on the tree. They were impressed. They liked it. Things like that, that um, they still have access to to the physical world through myself. 
they'll re- request songs from the 80s. There's a few of them that I don't know why they like the 80s, but they do. Um, a song called um, Disco Man by a, a band called The Damned. Never heard of the song, never heard of the, the group or anything, but it was out there. And I played it, and I asked them if they heard it, and they thanked me for it. So those type of interactions are what's going on today. And rest assured, we, we both, myself, here in the physical world, the entities on the other side, we both have one goal in mind, and that's to bridge the gap between the two worlds. Now, let me ask you this. Is there a loved one in your past that you would want to talk to again? Well, of course, there are several. Okay, well, for, for myself, my dad is one. Now, that being said, um, there's a few entities here that have asked me about their sons who are still alive. Now, I have people, you have people, and they have people that have crossed over, have they actually crossed over themselves and left people behind. Their, their, their thought and my thought is join it to communication-wise, what we do today, it's very slow. It's manual. It does work. Now, once the software and the hardware is developed to uh, streamline and automate it, it will be as simple as picking up a cell phone. That's our, our end goal here. So how do we get from where we're at now to there, I guess, becomes a burning question for me. Well, soft, software becomes an issue. Um, I talked to Danny Spirit Box. I talked to uh, other people out there. Um, it is possible to do something like that, but, of course, it takes capital, not, not what I have. So I'm thinking about other avenues to pursue as far as raise capital to do this. The technology is there, so to speak. The software can be made. The hardware can be made. What has to happen is the frequencies that I record on, there's an actual formula that I use to get to where they're at because the frequency where they're at is very, very low compared to where, where we, we actually talk and be, you know, we're heard. It's way below. So that's why you sometimes hear them, sometimes you don't with your normal ears. Um, the frequency where they're at, there's software that I use today in existence, and it, there's a multiplication, not multiplication, but an amplification formula that I use, and it takes me to where they're at every time. So I can sit there and ask, well, one of the entities here, his name is Richard. Um, I'll simply ask him, Richard, I, I need a test because, you know, I'm trying to see how to zoom in a little better on their frequencies. So I'll ask him, I need you to come over here and say something into the uh, laptop so I can test this. And he'll say whatever. He'll say, okay, I'll, I'll ask him, how was your day, Richard? He'll say, okay, and things of that sort. Um, simple tasks like that, they're, they're gun ho because they want the same thing to happen. There is an afterlife. Rest assured, there's some place we go. Actually, what's been mentioned to me is when we pass, we're actually with them. And um, kind of a very, very interesting point because one of them out there, even the ones that I, that I speak to today, some been here 28 years, some been here 30 years, 78 years, some been around for 1,000 years. Imagine what they've seen. But the point of that is, once we're over there, myself or you, one of the spirits that I do talk to today may be somebody that we ask for, for lack of a better term here, directions on how to go somewhere and do something. I have video today. Actually, I'm working on a documentary, and I should have it done this weekend. Um, about all the abilities that they have. Because once we're passing and we're dead, we're gone, we lose all the physical abilities, but we gain all the spiritual ones. So they're able to go through pretty much anything like a hot knife through butter. The big question I have today is how do they propel themselves around? They mentioned it's vibration. Yeah, of course, they are energy. That that may be possible. All kinds of things. Um, Today I do record them in what what is called a negative mode in camera setting. And the reason why I do that is because it makes everything around them lighter. It makes them darker. And um, everybody tends to go green or infrared cameras and things of that sort. They're missing out big time. I've never gone infrared, but the results that I have and you'll see out there in the documentary, what have you, pretty damn amazing. So you're... you're it's just, so you said you're gonna have you're having that ready. Well, you're hoping to have that ready for this weekend. Is that what I just? The, yeah. Well, it's 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 a it's a do-it-yourself documentary. So, I mean, there's no money really involved in it other than everything I've witnessed and documented and recorded and that and and so forth. No drama. 
no actors, just all pure interaction. That's what? Well, that's the way to do it if you're going to do it. Of course, I prefer no actors being involved with anything. Yeah, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Some parts of it do get a little boring, but that could be because of the shell shock has gone for myself. I've seen it so many darn times. <laughs> I've lived it so many darn times. It just it kind of drags on to myself. But if somebody has never seen it, yeah, their jaws can be on the floor. <laughs> Well, I, as I always joke, I've tried to edit my show several times and have had no luck putting it together myself because when I go searching for the best of or whatever it may be I'm looking for, I just can't find it because I'm so caught up in myself that I, you know, I hear I hear it and go, well, that's not even best of because you know it's hard to it's critical judgment of yourself. So I yeah, understand that. Um, but that being said, I think I have an advantage when it comes to uh, so-called ghost hunting. Or investigating the things of that sort. I have a, a six year relationship with the entities here today. And that in itself is worth a million. I, I don't even I can't even put a number on that because I could walk out to my living room or just sit here, have a conversation and pick up intelligent responses. Just outright I mean, not just vague sounds from anywhere, just but I'm talking about actual conversation back and forth. And I'll actually uh, play an actual uh, recording back, and I'll hear comments to things that I'm saying. And I'll stop, I'll take my headphones off, and I'll answer them, giving them just that, that respect. Now, the respect is key with them. I have yet to come across a, a, a malevolent spirit, something that's evil. Yeah, they flick papers off the um, table and knock a few things over and scared me at the time. Actually, when the papers were flipped off my desk, um, some school papers my daughter brought me home, you flick papers and you hear a log pop, right? That's right. exactly what it sounded like. But I jumped up because I was at home by myself, and I looked over to the uh, to the uh, desk, and these papers were gliding to the floor, two of them, gliding off, on, you know, coming down toward the floor. But at the same time, there was a, a grayish ball of smoke, if you will, that darted from there banked around the corner into my oldest daughter's room. Now that, it scared me when I heard the noise, but seeing that, I was just really amazed. I mean, I was, I was in awe myself, put it that way. <laughs> I bet. So I grabbed, my, I grabbed my recorder that I had on the desk, and I ran into my, uh, my daughter's room. I, I, I did a recording. I asked who's there, give me some names or something. It was a male entity. He did answer. He, I, I couldn't make out the name clearly, but the second syllable there, or the second part of the sentence was, and us. So he was saying his name, and us. So I figured, okay, well, there's, there's more than one here. And sure enough, there's 12 today. There was 10 uh, probably about a year ago. And, yeah, they're they're here. They even interact when uh, when, when the kids are playing the Wii. Me and my wife will be sitting there, and they're, they're, they're doing the, the bowling game or whatever it is. And me and my wife will look up because we heard a voice that said, strike from above us and I'm like okay cool if you guys want to you know interact that's fine enjoy the game they like football <laughs> uh, last year there's a, there's a recording I have I have to post it again um, San Francisco Giants were playing the Lions I'm sorry San Francisco um, four guys were playing the Lions and they were fumbling the ball at the beginning and sure enough you know I hear a voice or whatever so I'll turn on my recorder and just keep you know continue what I'm doing go back listen to it they were commenting on them fumbling the ball. So in, in my recording, toward the end of the game, I, I kind of give a shout-out to uh, the San Francisco 49ers. And I said, go 49ers. And the entity mimics me. It says, go 49ers. And I, I, I think that's so cool. They like to mimic my daughters as well. Not so much the old one, but the younger one. They like to um, paper off. Whenever she says something, they'll repeat it. And it's a, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I don't think they mean any harm. They just love the acknowledgement. They are very competitive. And they did confirm that you get to keep your thoughts, memories, and your experiences here going forth into the uh, the afterlife. So things we do here now to them is something that they've already experienced, most of them. But they've, they've, they're still familiar with pizza, for God's sake. There's one of them that likes to – well, he, he kind of uh, – Chimes in at the oddest times, but I'll be doing a recording. And he's kind of, he's kind of like a chatterbox, always saying something, and he'll tell me that his death came in a swimming pool. 
Okay, that's fine. My phone on one day, too. I don't know how it's going to happen, but one day I will meet them face-to-face. And for, I mean, for lack of a better term, I, I kind of have one up on the next guy, experiencing what I am today. Right. So, okay, let's get more into the nuts, nuts and bolts of this. So okay. you set your recorder out, and then you just start talking like you normally do? Yeah, just like I'm talking to you here. Okay, and then you let it run for hours, it seems, right? Well, it, it depends. If you're talking about my automatic recorder, um, that one I actually only use at night, and that brings a whole other subject of them speaking through us as we sleep. And the reason why I say that is because I do set that automatic recorder for one hour between three and four, and I set it above my, my headboard, pointed in, in my direction. Now, um, the evidence that I've got on that, well, first, they have told me, yes, they do speak to us when, when we sleep. That's one thing. But the men, women, children, and things that I don't even think were ever human at any given time, when those come through in between my snoring, <laughs> you'll hear me exhale, and there's a female. You'll hear me exhale at a different time, and there's a different male voice. You'll hear kids. You'll hear what, to me, sounded like a slave-type person way back when singing to a baby. You'll hear the baby interact back to him. And now, I'm the only one in the room here asleep, and that that alone kind of makes you wonder if some point when we're asleep, now, I'm, I'm no doctor or scientist or anything like that, but some state that we're in, maybe REM sleep or before or after, who, who knows when, maybe there is some link between when we are sleeping and the afterlife. They say that spirits come to you in your dreams. I very much believe that now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, somebody comes to us in our dreams for some of those weird dreams. We, I hope somebody's planting those in our mind. Uh, well, yeah, there, there's a one recording that I do have, and it's actually on, on the website right now. Um, there's entities, two two bells that were in my room present when me and my wife we were sleeping. And they were commenting, I mean, I'm not trying to be pervert or anything like that, but they were commenting on our breast. One kind of goes, oh, look at those, and uses the, the four-letter word for the breast. And the other one goes, oh, look at these, and he uses that word. And I'm going, wow, talk about aware. <laughs> they are aware. And who knows, maybe that particular entity spent his life in a, in an adult bar, who, who knows. <laughs> but point being, they are aware of everything we do here. Everything is recorded. Well, I wouldn't even say recorded, but recognized by whoever's in the house. My house, yeah, it's safe to say it is haunted. But it's also safe to say that I'm not the only one in this world that's experiencing things. Jim, when you go home tonight, granted, you are not alone. There's no way that you are alone. You're either choosing to embrace them or you're ignoring them. But there are entities, and for whatever reason, I don't know why, they are indoors. But they are also outdoors. I've walked through a park, middle, not really middle of the night, but it was like 8, 9, 9 o'clock at night. And they're saying, oh, there he is. Um, I've been called a prophecy. I've been called a conduit. And these are all by the entities, not by individuals. So, I mean, it's it's kind of a kind of mind-blowing when you think about it, that our existence, there's kind of a blanket over it which is everything else. And I don't just think, uh, as you would call them, spirits, demons, entities, and things of that sort, I don't think they're the only things that are out there. I have uh, other recordings that I've done here in, in the runway, and these entities I call them because they don't sound human, they don't speak English, but they do sound like they're sounded off in syllables, like sentences. There's a, record, a recording on my website that I call Contact Made, I would like to say that those are alien-type individuals, entities, or what have you. Now, the thing is, that day I could actually hear them as I was getting clo uh, closer to the room. Kind of a, a low tone, but mechanical-type noises. And as I walked into the room, it stopped. So when you hear the recording, you hear me asking them to make themselves known, whatever, blah, 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 and you hear them sound out. There's probably about six of them. And then you hear the footsteps as I'm approaching the room again, and then it gets quiet. It's like, wow, they can see me. I can't see them, but they can see me. So it was just really weird. 
So I'm a, I was going to say, I'm assuming that's the strangest thing that you've recorded. Um, strangest? No. I've had, maybe if I had to put a, a number on him, a little boy who comes by every now and then on Sundays. Um, I don't know why. He just goes by and hear him with my ears, good morning. And he kind of sounds like he has like an English type um, accent. But if I had to put a number on him, I'd probably say eight, nine, maybe. Just here in in the room. And I've I've, I've seen some some pretty uh, some pretty classy orbs. <laughs> I've woken up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, and right down the flight path, a red orb, maybe the size of a quarter, kind of floating down slowly, like like a like a slow walk, and uh, at a 45 degree down downward trajectory, and it just kind of fades off. The span maybe probably about five, six feet, and then it just it disappeared. And then after that, um, there's all kinds of things that have been out there. There's uh, white, misty-type pylon figures that my, my dogs outside actually turned me on to. And um, I was outside, and the light is on outside, but the light's off inside. So I see my dog jump and get fixed, her eyes fixed on the, uh, the sliding glass door. And so what happened was I caught the tail end of that white pylon shape going by. But then when the second one went by, I saw a clear stake. Just, it, it, it's like two were running around the living room. So th- things like that kind of make you wonder. Well, not even so much wonder. I mean, I know what's there. I'm not crazy for any uh, crazy or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope not. I mean, that makes a lot of us, or if you are. So just to clear that up. <laughs> No, the thing is, it, that's why I did my first recording, just to make sure. Which was how long ago? Uh-huh. I, I, guess, I guess I guess we we kind of been jumping back and forth off things here. So when did you do your first recording? First recording was done about six years ago. Okay. Here in my my bedroom. So have you done them all at your house, or have you done them out of the places? No, I've done them at my mom's place too. They weren't very um, receptive over there, I guess you can say. Not all the spirits that I come across are friendly, but they're not really evil to where they're throwing things really around the room or scratching me or anything like that. But you do have like uh, I call them Scrooges because they're 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 negative to an extent, not really into it. But yeah, I have done it at several different places. Um, yeah, several different places. Okay, so uh, we were talking nuts and bolts, and then we kind of uh, you kind of wondered, Sorry. but that's okay. No, you're fine. I, d- I just want to keep. I just want to bring that back up so people understand okay. why I'm prefacing this way because I want to talk about how you review these now. Oh, uh, how do I review these? Okay, um, have you ever heard of WayPad software? Yes. Okay, that's that's what I use. Use WayPad, and the clearest method for myself is uh, my laptop. I use WayPad with the laptop here, and now there's a program. Well, it is way bad. There's a section in there where you can use it for amplification. Now, I really don't want to get into specifics because I, I don't want to disclose what it is I do until the documentary. Um, there is a amplification process that I use with that, and that brings me, it well, actually brings their frequency up to where it's audible over here. So after I do a recording, I amplify it X amount of times or what have you, and then their levels, their sound spikes, as, as, as you would see on the screen, bring them up pretty close to mine. So when you hear the recording after it's played back, um, it's kind of, you'll hear spikes. Well, I guess they're raising up the volume a little bit, but it's more or less the same tone. So you'll you'll hear, um, well, just recently, I think I sent you the link to the last one I did a few, few days ago. Um it was an interview with, well, actually, I gave them a shout-out. It was Richard uh, O'Reilly and um, Peter. Giving them shout-outs, but as you hear the interaction going, I can't hear them for the most part. So I, they'll make comments, they'll say things, or I'll, I'll ask them a question, they'll give me a direct answer. Um, other, other than that, the, the process is pretty much simple, but it's done that one particular way each time. Right. As long as you're doing it consistently, that's the the important thing in, in most people's book. Of course, I harped on having paranormal standards a few weeks ago, so I can't back down from that now. you got to do it the same way every time, so it's repeat, repetitively. Yeah, actually, my my hope is that one day software and hardware be made where it can be real-time, not an actual slow process like what, what I do here, but actually the same thing happening just automatically. 
Right. I guess I probably should do this because I have a technical... Well, I had a technical glitch, not a whole throw-up. I had... I don't know. I can't even explain it at this point. It's just been one of those... Well, I told you last week I couldn't connect anywhere. This week I got connected to two out of three, which isn't bad, I guess, but I had to go searching for a password because it was telling me my password is wrong. Of course, it is put the new one in. It was the same one that was in there, but it worked. Oh, well, anyways. So my guest tonight is Ruben Hernandez of the RAF Project, and I had, I had your... Project, okay. Okay. Uh, see, I was worried about your name, not... Anyways. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, tell people where they can find you before we get too far gone into that again, because I'll probably forget again, so... Okay. Uh, well, they can find me at uh, thewraithproject.com, and uh, my Twitter call sign is um, at Project Wraith. And then my email, if you need to, or have any questions about the project, please do. Uh, get in contact with me. It's uh, the rate project info at gmail.com. Um, I was going to say something about, oh, Twitter. You've been having an issue. Twitter is one of the yes, one of the best friends in the world that you can have and one of the worst things at the, uh, the same time. Actually, what, what you were telling me there made sense that I started looking at the people that um, that I do follow yeah, and the people that follow me. So I guess I can start deleting people that are not following me. Right. That's so what I was going to say. I, 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 don't I, doing that today. <laughs> I don't understand why Twitter does it. Like, you should be able to follow whoever you want. I don't get why you can't. I mean, I guess if you follow a whole bunch of people that follow you back, I don't know. It'd keep you within that ratio anyways, but... Mm-hmm. I'm not a Twitter. I, I got to get somebody on from Twitter. If anybody knows anybody that works at Twitter that can like explain this to me in a non-nerd fashion, let, let's get it together. But um, clever answer to that too. Before I, I followed so many people and then I've reached this imaginary imaginary limit because I don't know. So I had to unfollow some people and adjust it back. But it's your social media. You should be able to do whatever, whatever you want with it. But some, there's somebody out there that can explain this to me, and I'm hoping to find them. But in the meantime, it is what it is. Point in my way if you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the link. <laughs> oh, I love Twitter, too. It's great. I, I've connected with a, a number of people via there. And my Twitter's at iTalkParanormal. If you can't spell that, you can't listen. <laughs> That's my rule. <laughs> That's my rule. Because <laughs> I, I, I have my personal Twitter's at Mallard, which is spelled funny. It's uh, have M-A-L-L-I-A-R-E, which, which is a little different from the Ducks, so... I don't know, but that's why I went to iTalk Paranormal, and I don't know. Oh, I didn't do that earlier. I should do that now, speaking of things that I should do. If you're looking to invest in a wonderful, and I mean wonderful, radio show, podcast, which is 89th on the uh, Science and Medicine list on Stitcher, if you're listening to this via Stitcher, write a review. I need them in the worst way. I'll explain more later. But just do it tonight, and I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, let me know. I, I'm very fair. I've looked at some other team, other other radio shows, and I'm going to charge you what they want to charge you for a banner at. For one, I'll, I'll show it to you. So just let you know. I'll give you airtime, at banner ads. I'll give you everything. So, okay. Enough of that. Maybe I'm selling myself short. Maybe I should sell for the same ads the price as he's selling his for. Why not? <laughs> Bryce just went up. See, you should have got on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll give somebody a good deal for the end of the year, and then if if you don't buy in, you don't buy in, and then wherever it goes, it may go. I may go crowd source funded, whatever that is, sell some T-shirts or something. So if you don't jump on, you you might lose out. I promise to do your read, or I'll record it so it sounds better. Either way. Okay, put my glasses back on now that I've done all of that. So, let's talk paranormal in general. Do you are you curious about any other of the? Uh, bef- I mean, obviously you're saying that you had some well, strange, maybe alien recordings. Does that pique your interest, or does Bigfoot, or does anything else in the paranormal realm? Like, yep. Well, I've always been a fan of the paranormal. It's just um. Never to this extent, never personal experiences and things of that sort. Always, you know, the blood gut type movies and things like that, which I wouldn't even call paranormal. I just call them horror, for lack of a better term there. Um, always been interested. I have a very interesting story that happened to me back uh, when I was probably about 12. Real quickly, I'll go through it. 
and this is actually the first thing that tipped me off to the paranormal world, um, Ouija boards. I'm sure everybody's familiar with those. Um, we had one, my brother, my cousin, and myself, we played a few times. And um, my older brother from Texas was uh, visiting us here in California. And I woke up that one night to him putting out the fire in the garage with a water hose. And I'm kind of wondering what was going on. So everybody gets up. He's outside. And um, he says he went out to have a cigarette, and there was uh, smoke coming from inside the garage. So he opens it up. Now, rest assured, this fire was on the far end corner with no windows burning from the inside out, and then the garage was locked. So after it was all said and done, the fire was, was put out and what have you. And in that corner, you could see the whole wall was charred, the beams were charred, three-quarters of the Ouija board was burned up, just in that corner. So it kind of makes you wonder what happened, what started it, no electrical fire went on, fire started from the inside out, door was locked. Kind of, it kind of made me wonder anyway does make you wonder, and I've heard different stories. Of course, everybody that listens to the show knows that I'm not a fan of the Ouija board just because it makes you have to spell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, How awful is uh, Hasbro, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, I mean, it's all the intent that the people put into it. If they want to conjure a demon, they can use a Monopoly board and com- com- conjure, if I could speak, this would probably be a good profession, um, <laughs> conjure a demon. Mr. Monopoly guy, I think is his name. Um, I, I just, you know, it's. But like I said, it's the intent. But that's the case with anything. It's it's true. Like if you were out trying to record demons, you, that's what you'd get. Yeah, yeah, because they're 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 watching. They're aware of what you're trying to do, and they may just give you what you ask for. I think so. I don't know. So. Well. Um. Do you remember I just mentioned how they could go through pretty much anything? Right. Through water, like or butter, with like, like a hot knife. Well, I have video of that. Video of them coming and going in and out of my body. Um, I asked for them to go through my hand. And, yeah, sure enough, they go from my wrist out my thumb area. Also, um, video of them shooting across the house into my cat. Um, multiples at, at one time. Now, there is a truth. Cats and animals and dogs or what have you, they, they do see things that we don't. That spectrum that they see in, they're aware of everything going on in that world. And the reason I say that because I, I can pick up the entities in, in my negative mode with my daughter. Or, you know, she's playing around. I'm, I'm actually doing a serious recording here. And I'll ask for two entities to fly over by her. You'll see two of them in the video go by her. But you'll also see my cat tracking them with her own vision. She, You see her head, she's following it, go above her. Now, I didn't see it with my actual eyes, but when it's a negative mode, you pick them up and you see my cat follow it as it goes over. I'm going, well, wow, she's she's seeing this. So I, I note that, they make a mental note in the back of my head. Watch my cat. She's hauling ass, going across the living room, chasing something. Again, nobody can see it. Everybody's kind of like, oh, she's cute, jumping here, jumping there, you know, trying to get something. I'm the guy that turns on the camera and goes looking with her. <laughs> so I, I get into the kitchen this one time, and I saw her. She went underneath the uh, the table, and she's fixed on something underneath the chair. So I, I come around the other side, through, through the kitchen, and turn on the camera. It's in negative mode. And sure enough, this ball orb, or whatever you want to call it, Starts out from underneath and heads into the living room. So I'm going, wow, they do see everything that we don't see. It's 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 kind of neat to watch her the way she behaves and then find what I do find. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what what we can capture, and I do agree with you that animals perceive more. But I I always laugh when I see the ghost hunters dragging the dog out. I don't think that I. I mean. There's, I mean, yeah, there's an element that I believe to that, but I don't think it proves anything except you've got a dog looking up in the air at something. I'm that showing he... you actual video of what the the cat is looking at and tracking it. Huh? See, now that could be convincing. But and I always joke, how do you how do you train a dog for the hunt of ghosts? Because you know you, you train a dog uh, 
to sniff out bombs, you know, there's bomb residue and stuff, yeah. or drugs, there's, so I, I've always joked, well, there's, it, a, there's a little it, packet of ghost odor that we... Yeah, there's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's my cat, she's not a dog, but I didn't train her to do this, this is just me following her, her lead. So wherever she takes me in the house, I go just kind of wondering what it is I'm going to find. And yeah, I've I found a few different things, pretty interesting, where she's laying there all sprawled out on the on the carpet. I'm sitting there on my laptop or doing the recording. It's kind of dark, but I'm in uh, black and white mode at this time. And um, you see a flash and an orb. It's it's the shape of an orb. This one. It goes out away from me, does a, a loop like a roller coaster, and heads out the side uh, window or door. And then one other one comes down my left side toward the kitchen and then backtracks, stops, comes back, and then another one angles off at a 90-degree angle. And then now there's two of them. They both dart into my cat's head. Clear as day. Just, they're, they're in there. I'm kind of wondering, okay, well, my, my thought on that whole subject is we are one, one, one body, but different entities make up our different facets of our personality. And that's what makes us us. So we're not one particular individual. Well, for instance, um, an, an individual that you knew 20 years ago. Yeah, sure, it's Joe or whatever you want to call him. But you see him 20 years from now, he's going to be different. Yeah, he's going to look older, aging, what have you. But his personality is different. And this is just entities coming and going. In interesting concept, and in, in the way I come across that is that I have evidence of them coming and going out of myself, my head, hands, whatever, going in and out of my cat. I'm just going, wow, this is this is really weird. <laughs> They're doing this for a reason. That's my thought on it. I think I think so too. Okay, so I just mentioned my Twitter at I Talk Paranormal. I want and what's your vote? Which is smarter, a dog or a cat? When it comes to the paranormal, only when it comes to the paranormal, not in general. Now. I'm curious because I, I think the cat is more in tune to things that are going on around it than a dog would be. I have to disagree with you. Well, that's I think it's a uh, I think it's a um, a toss up there. My dog's in the back. Um, they bark for no reason in, into the air, and I'll look out front, look out back. There's nothing going on, but yeah, they're 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 onto something. And I'll sit out there, listen to them bark, and they're barking straight into the air, and I'm recording. There is entities out there that would sit there and tell them help us for some reason they seem to protect in some some facet I'm not even sure what it is I've, I've, I need to actually pay more attention to what happens when when they're doing this but this whole like um conversation so they they do see just the same they are able to pick up everything sight sound and I'm not sure but if you listen to the recordings that I do with my dogs barking, there is another tone overlapping their barking, which kind of lets me wonder, what are they? Are they the same energy that we are? I think so, because my cat, she'll get up and get all close, nuzzly, and very, very affectionate. And in this recording, I picked up, yeah, I'm trying to flirt with you a little bit. And I'm kind of going, wow, okay. It makes you wonder. I mean, entities coming and going through myself, through the cats. And this is what you see, the, the different facets of somebody's personality, whether it be dog, cat, human, whatever. I think we are all that same energy, just in different bodies. I've got a lot of people saying cat. I have, no, one's, no one's hit the Twitter yet. I know there's people out there because a bunch, bunch of them just busted me about spelling I talk paranormal. So I'm curious, dog or cat, when it comes to the paranormal, which one is more in tune? I'm not going to say smarter again. I know that was kind of a stupid thing to say. Um, <laughs> I would have to lean, lean toward cat, if anything. <laughs> so I, I, no, I noticed that you, you were mentioning filming in different forms of video. Where did I mean, I'm sure you just were trying it out of an idea one night, but tell me a little bit more about that, I guess. I'm kind of curious about. Well, the video, um, kind of a hit or miss, kind of trial and error. It's been that way from, from day one. Um, yeah, you can go green, but you actually cut out a lot of it is what, what it is you're trying to see. Now, the reason I say that is 
Um, for instance, I'll be in the kitchen talking with my wife and daughter, and that's at the tail end of the runway. So actually, a few weeks ago, um, we're sitting having a conversation, and I have overhead lighting, right? So it's, it's shining down, and an entity comes flying down toward us from my room up the runway, which uh, ends in the kitchen. And we're, we're in the kitchen at this time. Flies in between us. I see it with my bare eyes because of the angle where I'm standing. I'm looking down at a 45-degree angle at whatever went by. The lighting's above, so it's shimmering off it as it comes by that uh, from my angle. My daughter and wife, they're sitting on the other side. So when it flies by, they're kind of behind it, if, if, if you will. And I'm going, well, I just saw it with my eyes, and they didn't notice anything. So I'm kind of wondering, okay, go with that. Um, some time ago, um, I was actually just playing around with a negative camera, and I saw a streak. And I go, okay, well, let's try this now. So I, my formula that I use here in the house is my overhead lighting. I turn on halfway with the rheostats. I turn on the switches, turn them up halfway, turn on the negative, negative setting. That seems to be optimal for, for viewing them. They show up black. They show up very, very dark. Um, so everything else is lit up around them, makes them stand out. Pop for, pop for better, I, I guess a lack of a term. <laughs> but yeah, they do stand out. And that's what I, I tend to use a lot. I use a, a lot of black and white. I use a lot of that. Um, I have one uh, recording done with just regular camera when, when I first started recording in the living room where you'll see two like balls of light go up. They cruise around, and they kind of morph, change into something else, and they streak over over my couch, uh, kind of where I'm at. And by, by the time they get over the couch, they go from being quarter size to being maybe a foot and a half in diameter and just a zoop, swoop right over the um, the edge of the um, the couch. And I was sitting there going, wow. I mean, this is just things going on. I'm just more of a spectator than anything. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad when I'm doing this that I have the mute button right square in front of me because I had to mute my microphone because I, I didn't want to laugh over... I was listening to you, but I, I'm reading these tweets and... Um, can his cat tell me what the fox says? Kevin in Arizona, I'm going to get you, buddy. Don't worry. And you host the show, too, bud, so your day is coming. Uh, I hate that song, by the way, for the record. So, just I don't know. I just had to say it. I had to say I hated that song. And <laughs> that was where that, that's a, I hate pop culture. Not really. I just hate that song. The, um, the reason why I, I lean toward cats as far as uh, what they witness. There's another video that I have, and actually I think I have this on the on my website right now. Uh, my cat is sitting in my um, chair at my desk, and she's got her eyes fixed underneath the desk. And that caught my eye because she's like real skittish, and then she's fixing her eyes down there. So I kind of I turned it on. It's just black and white at this time. Turned it on, and I started walking toward her from the restroom across the house. And as I'm walking toward her, you see this. It's a, I guess you could say it's an orb, maybe quarter size maybe a little smaller but it flies out from underneath goes right past her and, and past me and she's looking at it and then she just flings her head the other way like oh shit it, it went the other way and she turns the whole upper body quick like it went past us and she's like Where, where's it going and that's actually pretty neat to watch <laughs> yeah I'd imagine so okay so I told you we got like eight minutes left so we're getting there so all good. I told you it'd go fast. We were talking about that's what we talked about before we went on air tonight. Is how fast an hour goes because you were saying we were saying most paranormal shows go two, three, four, seven, twelve. <laughs> I know that's ridiculous. Twelve. Of course, I think somebody's going to do it just to spite me. Um. <laughs> so tell us, tell us. I mean, you're you're getting close to having a documentary done. Where will it be available? Will be available via your website. I'm, is that? A safe assumption? Yeah, that's 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 one avenue. Um, there is a couple of producers back east that wanted me to put together a treatment for them on it. Um, I've sent them clips of other things um, that are actually in a document as well, documentary as well. But yeah, they're they're requesting treatments at this time, and we'll see what happens. And so, so what's the future hold for you? I mean, you're just wrapping up this in the the documentary project. Well, and 
So where... for me, my my number one goal here is, like I said earlier, to join the two sides, um, have that communication that I do now, um, put together hardware wise, software wise, and to make communication with the other side as easy as picking up a cell phone, which I really think is possible. It's everything I do today just streamlined and not automated. They want the same. Um, there are what's called uh, shadow walkers that pretty much, um, yeah, they're they're a little negative if, if, if you ask me. But there's one that did mention that um, his exact words, you're not supposed to hear me. Now, um, yeah, maybe there's there's some proof, uh, some um uh, some sense to that, maybe some truth to it. Actually, Jim, I'm going to put that on Twitter tonight. Um, Shadow Walker told me you're not supposed to hear me, so you can hear what it is I accidentally recorded. <laughs> and he's pretty eerie, so it's it's kind of scary, but it kind of makes me wonder how much we are supposed to know, how much we're not supposed to know, and maybe at some point we have to just forget about it and it never happened. <laughs> that first. I think the can the can's already open on that. I don't think we can forget. Yeah, it is. It is. I've, I've spoken out loud, and I'm sorry. I did. I heard you. But um, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it now. No. It's been live around. The, it's been around the world now, so we can't. There's no taking that back. Well, I, I've told them why. Why did you guys contact me? And their comment was they were trying to scare me out of the house. Which kind of makes me wonder, when I did put a bid down in this house, um, it was already locked in with somebody else, and they backpedaled for some odd reason. I, I don't know why. <laughs> they backpedaled, and now I'm here. Maybe it was um, fate, who knows. But they said that, that at the time, they were trying to scare me out of here. And I, as they know now, I, I don't scare easily. <laughs> it makes me more and more curious. <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder what's going on. So, do you have, I mean, I guess, well, how often do you update the stuff that's on your website, I guess, was one of the little things I was going to ask I you. Update, I haven't updated in a while. I'm not really a webmaster. Um, a lot of the stuff there is probably a year old. Um, some stuff is fairly new. It just depends on how I have time. I mean, it, it is time consuming. It's not really hard, but just to sit there and um, put everything into the format where it can be in there. Um, trim them. Uh, it's just time consuming, <laughs> but I'm saving everything for for the documentary. That's got all the latest stuff. Right. So go ahead. Uh, go ahead. And, I don't think we caught the site in there again. And I know you're on Twitter, so let's get that out there one more time because I'm, I'm sure people. Yeah. The the, the website is uh, thewraithproject.com, and uh, my Twitter call sign at Project Wraith. And then uh, my email, if you have any questions on the project or any suggestions on it, or have any questions, um, actually what I've done in the past is uh, if you have any questions that you want me to ask the entities on the other side and put that recording on the air and let me know, um, the email is thewraithprojectinfo at gmail.com. That's, that's wonderful. So how, I guess the one, one last question, I keep saying that, like I'm... <laughs> trying to end this, but uh, I guess, I, you know, subconsciously I've got to start slamming the brakes on, because if not, I'll be at, here at 10 after 10 going, I should have ended 10 minutes ago. Um, no. <laughs> um, how often do you do these EVP sessions? Pretty much um, every other day. I mean, I've, I've gone maybe a week and not had any conversation until I hear my name called or feel pressure changes on, on my legs or get a cold draft after and take off my shirt. Yeah, I mean, they have ways of getting a hold of me as well. <laughs> so were they um, frustrated with you for not doing one for that long? Uh, they, they don't really get frustrated. Um, there is recording out there, and I think it's on the site as well. Um, I started to do a recording, and like I said, they're competitive. They are smart. They can see, hear, and think just without their bodies. Now, when I started the, the um, audio that day, there was a female entity that asked me, are you going to play with us? Because they like to do those things. They like to do um, a hold up object and ask them, what is this? And I'll ask several times before I give them the answer. That way they can answer. I'll ask them, um, what's uh, 2 plus 2? It's 4. They give me the answer. I'll ask them, uh, they like to play the, the uh, repeat game. Uh, and I think I have this on the site too right now. It's called um, 
uh, the, well, it's called the repeat game. It's on repeat after me. What time is it? And that raspy, deep voice, sure enough, repeats me. What time is it? I mean, th those are intelligent responses. Th those are them thinking about what they're saying, thinking about what I'm asking them to do. They'll sit there and read the uh, direct TV sign off my TV. Uh, I do that all the time. I tell them you guys have done this a million times, but I love it when you guys do it. And I ask them, what does it say? Who's got the answer? They'll say it. Direct TV. Simple as that. I mean, it's common communication, just just like we're talking here now. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of it. So I guess what my what? No, I'm not saying my last question again. I refuse. <laughs> My next question is, what would be your advice for somebody who, maybe not just starting, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who have been recording for a while. What would be your advice to increase their EVP intake or, I don't know how. Okay. Um, pretty much like this. You want to reassure them that you can't hear them. Ask them to give you a question instead of asking them questions all the time. The other thing is, Zach Bagans, I mean, him have got into a Twitter argument about this before. Um, I don't agree with what he does, walking into some place, barking out ors, commands, and things of that sort. No. Like I said earlier, the change where I have the advantage, I have a relationship. I respect them, they respect me. I do things for them, and I told them I'll do whatever as long as it's legal. Anything at that point stops. But the advantage that I have having that relationship is they want to talk to me. We talk back and forth all the time. They'll get my attention. Not only I'll go looking for them, they'll come looking for me. Just to shoot the shit for lack of a better term. <laughs> so when he goes into some place, well, picture this, you back in school. Uh, you went to school. You're new. Everybody's shy. Nobody really wants to talk to you. That's like him walking into a, a building, barking out orders and commands and expecting someone to talk to him. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, he gets what he does, but it's nothing compared to what the interaction has done here. We, we have that understanding. So if anybody out there is going to be doing this, yeah, rest assured that you, you treat them like a human. They were once one. They're that same energy without the body. You give them that respect, the reassurance that you can't hear them, answer things that they have in questions, they will talk to you. They will. So any last bits of wisdom you want to put out there to the world? I mean, it doesn't have to be paranormal or anything. You can just, I'm just going to give you a minute here to put a bow on it, I guess. Well, just um, take heed to what I'm saying about as far as bridging the gap between the physical world and the other side. There is an afterlife. So if anybody has any thoughts, comments, or suggestions on what I can or maybe take into consideration about bridging the two, please email me. I'm open for everything, uh, especially on suggestions if anybody has any um, connections as far as software and hardware production, things of that sort, maybe um, somebody in the paranormal world. I know Spirit Box is interesting, interested. Um, there's a few others out there that want to – collaborate one day and get all this done so I mean it, it, it is a dream so to speak but again it's being done today just manually alright Ruben I want to thank you for coming on you know, I know that I'm going to actually do a little rant here in a second but I want to thank you for being patient with me I guess is what I'm going to say to you <laughs> I mean, we booked thank this you. we booked this months ago and I, it's been a long time coming so I want to thank you for um, for all of that so I, I want to say good night and good luck with the documentary and everything going forward. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me. I appreciate everybody out there. And just uh, keep checking it out, theraceproject.com. All right. And there we go. So I, I said I promised a little rant, and tonight's closing rant is brought to you by my newsletter at iatalkparanormal.com. Go sign up so you can get more Insider Rants. I did the Insider Rant this week on this topic, but I'm going to bring it up again. I think it needs mentioned at this point. I'm 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 tired of it actually. I can't book everyone the minute you drop me an email. I could, but I'd be booked in the 2015 and you'd be still frustrated with me. I have so many wonderful individuals who a send me an email via the website and say, "Hey, I want to come on and talk about my project, my book, my whatever." Great. 
I, I like new guests. I love new guests. I I feed off new guests. I have so many people that I know in my personal life to bring something to the show. Uh, most notably, if you want to know one of those names, it's like Andrew Nesbaum. Very solid, very brilliant guy. I like having him on. And that brings me to my next point. People that I want to have on again. Uh, matter of fact, next week I have one of these people on, Thomas Fusco. I want to bring him on quite a bit. But I don't. I don't try to overexpose my listeners to the same guest over and over and over again. But I do enjoy bringing repeat guests back on. So it's a process. It's not, hey, I dropped you an email last week. Why haven't you replied yet? Well, A, I'm a one-man operation. B, I'm currently booked in the, until February. Okay? C, I can't book everybody once they drop me an email because I've already got a database full of people who I want on, who want to be on, who have been on. I love everybody, and I'm going to get there. I'm going to get to you if you give me enough time. I do one show a week. Rumors of me doing two shows are greatly exaggerated, so just keep it in mind. I'm here, I do one show, and I do about 48 shows a year because of I get sick. The kids get sick. Life happens. I love you all. I love every listener. I love everybody that wants to be on. Thank everybody. And with that, have a good night. Well, before we flip that on-air sign to the off position, a quick reminder. For all things about the report, previews, and reviews, go to italkparanormal.com. This is Thomas P. Fusco, author of the book Behind the Cosmic Veil, A New Vision of Reality, an originator of the theory of supergeometry. And you are listening to The Mallard Report. Hi, this is Dave Roundtree, author of Paranormal Technology, Understanding the Science of Ghost Hunting, lecturer, author, and paranormal researcher. And when you're not uh, busy in the field, do what I do and listen to the Mallard Report with Jim Mallard. If you're looking for a radio show where all things paranormal go, well, tune in and be in the know with Jim Mallard as your host. Yeah, the man.